Hi, it's Monday, October 27th. We're watching what is unfortunately an incredibly dangerous situation for the island of Jamaica here in the Caribbean with major hurricane Melissa becoming a category five hurricane to the south of the island as it moves towards the west southwest, nearing its maximum potential intensity at this point, becoming a major hurricane as expected and has not actually stopped intensifying yet over the past 24 hours with a rather steady trend uh, towards stronger winds and lower central pressure in aircraft observations. This is the latest from the Air Force plane that's currently flying through the storm showing the latest drops on in the center measuring a pressure of 912 millibars lower means a stronger storm. The surface wind associated with that measurement was actually about 36 knots, which indicates the sand missed the center by a little bit. So the actual estimated minimum pressure now is 908 millibars. That's the lowest we've seen so far Flight level winds in the dark salmon colors here were as high as 160 knots or 185 miles per hour from the aircraft. If you estimate what the surface wind is based on that, it's about 165 miles per hour, making this a solid Category 5 hurricane. This is a composite swath from the NOAA Hurricane Hunter aircraft that was in the storm just before the Air Force aircraft was. You can see on the right hand panel here the wind about two kilometers above the ocean surface. Everything in purple is hurricane force or above. Uh, the good news about this storm, I guess, is that the wind field is relatively compact. Hurricane force winds only extend outward about 30 miles from the eye. So in terms of wind impact, it really matters where you are relative to the center of the storm. The eye wall is where the category five winds are confined, and that's only a 10 nautical mile wide eye at this point. That could theoretically change if the storm undergoes an eye wall replacement cycle before landfall, which typically leads to a broadening of the core wind field. And if we look at the radar composite from the plane, there's the inner eye wall there. There is some banding in the outer core around the eye wall that could eventually culminate in the formation of a secondary eye wall and a secondary wind maximum. We haven't yet seen that though. If we look back at the right hand panel, if you look at the center of the storm and go outward in really any given direction, you'll see that the wind speed decreases essentially monotonically with distance from the center. So we don't have a secondary wind ring. If we were to get one though, uh, we would likely see the beginnings of an eye wall replacement wherein the inner eye erodes a little bit, the maximum wind comes down from its current category five levels temporarily, an outer eye wall may build and then eventually replace the inner one and then possibly a re-intensification of the storm with a larger eye at the end of the process. That can take 24 to 48 hours uh, on average. This is a smaller storm, so it could complete maybe a little quicker than that, uh, but we haven't, yet see one, we haven't yet seen one begin in earnest. On infrared satellite imagery, we have seen some trochoidal wobbling of the eye, just slightly less than straight motion, little wobbles as it moves towards the southwest, which can indicate the beginnings of some instability in the core that could lead to an eye wall replacement, uh, but that process has not yet clearly begun. Uh, we're about 24 hours now from the anticipated landfall time in Jamaica, so we'll see if that occurs. But from this point forward, you know, we are expecting a, a very major catastrophic hurricane with any fluctuation in intensity likely to be governed by internal dynamics, either that eye wall replacement that I just discussed or slight variations in the ocean temperature beneath the storm or small disruptions due to vertical shear in the environment. Uh, but really, it's all plus or minus on something that's going to be incredibly strong and dangerous regardless of the exact value of the maximum winds in the eye wall as it comes ashore. We are expecting a turn towards the north any time now today. Within the next several hours, we'll likely see that. You've seen the west-southwesterly motion so far. A turn towards the north-northeast is expected later today, bringing this into the western half of Jamaica. And the reason we're expecting that turn is if we look at the GFS 500 millibar mid-level steering flow at this time, again, we have two competing steering flows. One is this ridge over the Straits of Florida and Western Caribbean, which has been imparting this northeasterly flow on the storm and helping to force it towards the southwest, competing with the broader ridge over the Eastern Caribbean, which is uh, generating steering flow out of the south the opposite direction. And this trough over the southern U.S. is now moving across Florida or to the north of Florida in a way that is eroding this ridge in here. Uh, so this is now disappearing and this northeasterly steering influence on Melissa will go away. And so at some point uh, we start to see a turn back towards the north because this ridge erodes in a way that allows the ridging out here to essentially win the steering battle as it were and start to push Melissa back towards the north. 
Uh, we're at the part of the forecast now where this is a certainty. We know that this turn is going to occur. It's just about plus or minus how many miles in the landfall point uh, will the storm actually cross the coastline. But right now this track is uh, pretty iced in. You can see the GFS here bringing the storm just over the western half of Jamaica here. Every model uh, does make landfall in that part of the island. We've seen the forecast wobble back and forth the last few days. Uh, it was closer to Kingston a couple of days ago. We have seen the track shift just a little bit more towards the western side of the island in the last couple of days. So if you're in Kingston, you know, that will help just because of how compact that wind field is. I can show you how that might look on the HAFS A model here. This shows the wind field. Everything in purple is hurricane force wind. The Category 5 uh, catastrophic winds are confined to the dark pink region of the eye wall here. You'll see the storm make this turn towards the north-northeast. And once you superimpose this on the island of Jamaica, you can kind of see where the most destructive wind field is. And it will not encompass the entirety of the island. So if you're in Kingston, this is at least some good news for that part of Jamaica. Obviously not for the western side, uh, but this is going to be a storm that covers the island with other hazards, even if not uh, the eye wall itself. There's going to be heavy rains and storm surge across many parts of the island, regardless of exactly where the eye comes ashore, with the catastrophic wind damage largely confined to the area around the landfall, whichever half of the island that is right now, the western half is where landfall is expected and given that we're only about 24 hours out uh, that's likely to be the case you can see that the eye is now due south of the western part of the island so you can tell that if it were to make a turn today it would have to hook pretty sharply to make landfall anywhere other than this half of the island right here so that is where the landfall is expected right now if we look at the sea surface temperature map from that HAFS model, uh, one thing to point out here is that, you know, typically a hurricane moving this slowly and making this kind of hooking motion would be cooling the ocean beneath it in a significant way. And that would normally limit the storm quite a lot, but unfortunately the Caribbean is a unique place. The warm water here is excessively deep and it takes a lot of time to drain that energy out of the ocean. So even as Melissa has been intensifying to a major hurricane and moving at a crawl to the southwest, there hasn't been that much cooling. There is a little bit. You see the orange and yellow showing up here, but it's really not that significant, which is why the hurricane is able to top out at Cat 5 and remain there. As it turns toward the north, you'll see that during this slow turn, there's a slight bit of extra upwelling, and that could cause some fluctuations in the intensity. Uh, but as it moves towards the island itself, it's over warm water again, and uh, it's really not a severe limitation on the storm, unfortunately. So this could very well be category five at landfall uh, barring any kind of eyewall replacement cycle that temporarily lowers the max winds and if we look back at the steering forecast here this is the gfs showing that turn towards the northeast and this will simply continue this motion so this is going to bring this through jamaica and then across eastern cuba and portions of the southeastern bahamas and then on up in the vicinity of bermuda which is right there this uh, subtropical jet stream provides an easy lane towards the northeast which makes this track forecast relatively straightforward with just some minor adjustments in the track likely from here on out so you see this move over the central part of eastern cuba and then through the southeastern bahamas possibly uncomfortably close to the turks and caicos details on the track here will certainly matter given how compact the wind field is though it will likely be a little bit broader by the time it gets to the bahamas because the land disruption caused by jamaica and cuba will cause the wind field to grow in size a little bit and as the storm starts moving northward into the jet stream that will also cause the wind field to grow you can see this big trough over the eastern U.S. providing this lane northeastward, so this will accelerate through the Bahamas and then on up toward the vicinity of Bermuda. Models are both to the east and to the west or over the island, so some spread there. Uh, best case scenario for the island would be passing to the east because this side will be weaker in terms of the wind impacts if it were near or west of the island impacts would be more significant, uh, but this remains about four days out at this point expected uh, passage is on the morning of October 31st or so. You can see that the upper level wind flow at this point will show the hurricane moving up into some southwesterlies. Aloft wind shear will be increasing. The storm will be knocked down a little bit by the high terrain of Jamaica and Cuba, so it will be weakened by the time it moves through the Bahamas, possibly 
uh, weaker than a major hurricane, so category one or two, perhaps most likely in the Bahamas. And then not expecting that much reintensification, maybe a little bit, uh, but as it moves up towards Bermuda, uh, wind shear will be increasing and the waters will be cooling in a way that prevents this from being a bona fide major hurricane by the time it makes it towards the island. We're pretty late in the year here, late October, difficult to get a major hurricane this far north this time of year. This is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center as of 11 a.m. Eastern Time on October 27th. You can see that turn towards the north and north northeast expected. Landfall currently projected in the vicinity of Treasure Beach, Jamaica on around or just after 8 a.m. Tuesday morning. There is still some plus or minus on this. The storm is moving relatively slowly. Some erratic wobbles can always occur with hurricane landfalls. You can see the rough cone of uh, average uncertainty here showing you where the, the range of possible landfall locations might reasonably be expected to be. Uh, again, the catastrophic winds will be confined pretty close to the landfall point, but the entire island will see the other hazards from excessive inland flooding due to feet of rain that are falling now and will continue to fall over the next 24 hours over the island and storm surge along the coastlines as wind pushes water ashore. This will begin accelerating towards the northeast and possibly still be a major hurricane when it moves over eastern Cuba, where we do have hurricane warnings in red here. And then hurricane watches for the central and southeastern Bahamas and Turks and Caicos. Again, some plus or minus on exactly where the hurricane will move through, currently forecasted to move over Crooked Island on its way towards the northeast. That would be during the day on Wednesday. We still have a tropical storm warning for the Haitian coastline. We have continued to see heavy rain here. You can see all of the thunderstorm activity on the eastern side of the storm, uh, right hand side of your screen here, which extends well to the east of Melissa's Eye and continues to rake southern Haiti with heavy rain. Landslides and flash flooding remain a big concern here. And you can see how much rain is expected to fall in the next three days with maximum amounts, of course, over Jamaica at this point with isolated amounts up to two and a half feet over portions of the island, uh, but also eastern Cuba and an additional amount over a southwestern Hispaniola. That's in addition to the feet of rain that have already fallen in portions of Haiti so far. So unfortunately, just a terrible flooding disaster occurring in these areas, widespread infrastructure disruption expected uh, in these countries. And really hoping everyone stays safe here especially in Jamaica, as the full gamut of possibly uh, devastating hazards uh, moves into the island over the next 24 hours. Hope everyone is prepared, hunkers down, and stays safe as Category 5 Hurricane Melissa gets ready to make its move on Jamaica. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.